Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Eric Bloomquist. I'm with the product team at Ad Builder. Uh, also been a real estate agent, so I've been in your shoes, and it's actually immensely helpful in this role. Um, I'm also joined here by Scott Feldman, our chief revenue officer, and he also has years of experience in real estate uh, and also with ad tech. Morning, everybody. And, uh, thanks for having us. And I wanted to start by really thanking Kirk and the other members of your product and engineering teams. They have been exceptional to work with. And in terms of this presentation, I, I have a few slides to present, but I want to spend really the majority of the time in the platform. So when you place an ad, you really feel confident and you get full value out of the experience. Um, and instructions from David, um, feel free to put any questions you might have in the chat. Um, we're instructed not to answer them during the course of the uh, webinar. We'll answer all of those at the end during the Q&A session. And honestly, like the presentation itself probably won't take the entire hour. Um, if it did, I would kind of question what we built. <laughs> like, because uh, our goal was to make ad placement super simple. And while keeping the ads themselves really optimized and effective. So I will start with the showing the deck. Okay. And I wanted to start with just why should you place ads in general, right? Um, you know, an easy answer to that is, well, to sell the house. Um, and that's true and possibly at a better price. Um, but there are many more reasons um, why you should place digital ads. And I just, I will cover these quickly. Um, and one of those is to impress your seller. And anybody who's been a real estate agent for any period of time knows that we continually have to defend our commissions, though we should not have to. But, uh, and really advertising gives you the opportunity to show your seller your marketing savvy and how hard you're working on their behalf and we i'll get to this later but we also have a shareable ad report um, that gives all the metrics around the ad who it's reached um, that makes evidencing your value uh, really really effective um, there is also building your brand right um, you know, we often say within the company that there are two departments within an organization. One is marketing, one is sales. Um, agents tend to really like the sales part of it. Advertising is the marketing aspect of it. And, you know, from a value standpoint, a hundred dollar ad can really result in thousands of impressions. And, you know, what that really means is how many people saw your ad. And it can result in hundreds of, of actual indications of interest, people who clicked on your ad. So really, like at that point, you are the agent that's top of mind with a big audience. Um, there is proof of listing expertise. Um, I don't know like what the latest numbers are, but I think something like 50% of NAR members have sold a home in the last 12 months, right? So... You know, a listing ad is really your highest form of social proof. It's evidence that you're busy and that you're selling homes, right? So, and I, I want to make a point to that, right? Like, and it's a point I referenced earlier that, you know, there are more reasons than just to sell the home. So when we get into the platform, I'll show you different advertising opportunities, but recognize that, a under contract listing or a sold listing is also a great advertisement because that's really your best opportunity to attract sellers and show off your neighborhood expertise. And from a lead generation standpoint, which people would usually like me to start off with, um, there is value to all events within the listing life cycle. Um, when you're advertising a coming soon or an open house 
you're probably going to attract mainly buyers. But like, as I just discussed before, when you're under contract or sold, that's going to be very attractive to sellers because that's evidencing really your neighborhood savvy and that you get things done. And from a lead standpoint, um, we're tracking it at about $20 per lead. And when we're, when we're referencing a lead, what we're talking about is either a phone number or an email or both. And so really for a $100 ad spend, you're going to average about five leads and that's pretty good value. Um, apparently, like I don't have to sell you on this. This was a survey of US, U.S. real estate agents, and they referenced social media as the number one tech tool for uh, generating leads. And, you know, what love or hate social media, like that's where consumers are, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm in the 55 to 64 age demographic, and they still spend 45 minutes a day on Facebook, which is one of the places where we place our ads. So everything that you put out there is going to get a lot of eyeballs. Um, here's, I hate to say this, but like, even if you don't wanna be on social, really at the end of the day, your consumers are going to expect you to be on social. So really we want to make your time and effort worthwhile. Um, you might ask why I drug the portals into this on this particular slide, but you know our our money and our time is finite, and I thought this this diagram did a good job of breaking that down. Um, I'm not arguing at all that the portals don't give value; they do, right? Like, uh, but it is expensive, you know, and it could be up to forty percent of your commission. So while it's easy, pay them money, I'm going to get exposure. Um, you also have the budget considerations surrounding that. Um, and then there's the other direction in going it alone, right? And going to the platforms directly because you can do that, right? Um, but that deals with a lot of complexities, right? Like we create video on your behalf. What is your marketing savvy? Who am I going to target? Is my ad compliant, right? What is a keyword phrase, right? All of those things, right? Um, so at the end of the day, what our job is to do is to reduce those complexities. Take all of those things that you saw in the, in the right-hand quadrant there and address them and optimize them so we save you the time. And at the end of the day, kind of like what I was discussing earlier, five leads off of $100, thousands of impressions, hundreds of clicks, right? It's pretty good value for your marketing dollar. And I think the nice thing in addition to that associated with it is you're really reaching consumers where they are, right? Like uh, as referenced 45 minutes, 45 minutes a day on Facebook. I think it's comparable on Instagram. So you're reaching consumers where they are. And so that brings us to where we are placed and really the ideal spot for ease of use on your behalf, right? Um, the screen is going to look familiar to you, right? Like this is ad edit within your North Star interface. Hopefully if you've been in there already, you should be seeing like when you're within this screen, the preview your ad function. And so clicking that is going to take you directly to the ad builder interface. Um, there is no login or password required. And what you're going to see um, when you get in there, like the, the process, I th think when I, when I say 60 seconds or less, that is not an exaggeration. We track people through the platform. We have people placing their second ad in as little as 30 seconds. And that does not compromise the ad in, in any way, right? Everything is fully targeted and optimized on your behalf. So, and I said, we're gonna go through very few slides. And what I wanted to do was take you directly to the platform itself. Okay, hopefully what you're seeing here right now is our goal screen. So when you click within the North Star interface, this is where you're going to arrive. 
<clears throat> few things that I want to point out here is that there are two different types of ad campaigns that you can run. One of those is going to be ad intelligence. One is going to be ad target. To give you a brief overview of the difference between the two, so what ad intelligence is going to do is it's going to capture every event in the listing lifecycle. So if I want to run a campaign that's going to take me all the way from coming soon, if you have that available in your market, to sold, ad intelligence will capture all of those, right? And so that includes coming soon, just listed, open house, price reduced, under contract, and if you're so lucky to sell within that campaign duration, sold as well. There is one more distinction with ad intelligence over ad target is it also runs on search. And you may ask, well, why isn't search available on ad target? And the reason is ad intelligence is for a fixed duration of 21 days. 21 days is going to give us enough time to be effective within search. If you were to run, for instance, a search campaign for only five days, to be honest, it is never going to get out of the gate. What's how search ads work is that they take them a bit longer to discover the target audience so that it really starts to dial it in at about after the first week and it continues to get more effective over time. Now, if you wanna run a short duration campaign, my recommendation is choose one of the ad targets. And there are legitimate reasons to do that, right? Like I go, this is a listing that's gonna be kind of hard to sell, right? So I really wanna prime the market, create a buzz around my listing. So I'm gonna dump money into a coming soon. I might just have a tough experience or tough conversation with my seller, right? Like I go, why has this been on the market for 28 days, right? I see other properties out there selling, right? And so like, then I want to go, okay, we're going to get some new eyeballs on this. We're going to run a seven day price reduced campaign. And that itself is also a reasonable approach to take. So I'm going to go through the ad intelligence portion of this first. I'm going to click next. Now, this is a screen I want you to give some focus to. Um, this is the actual information and photos that are going to appear within your media. Um, we get most of this information from your MLS, um, but very often it's, it's either going to be, hey, that's not actually the photo I wanna show, or that's not my preferred logo. Or for instance, I go by a nickname, right? So this is where you're going to change this information. Just you want to make sure because this is appearing on your media, that everything on this is perfect. And after you've gone through the first time, it's going to save all of this information. My next screen, and remember, I'm running ad intelligence here, right, is my budget allocation. The budget allocation, when I'm running ad intelligence, because this also goes to search is the budget minimum is 150. And that's going to ensure that you have enough budget to run to be effective on both platforms. Down here, as you see, I can toggle and I'm going to get the estimated performance surrounding this. All of that estimated performance is based on actuals within our platform. And down here, I have my platform allocation. So while this will go out to both search and to social, I can change the allocation on spending more on search or more on social, or I can just click these buttons and change the allocation. A quick explanation on why this reads branding and why this reads leads. In general, and this is blanket general overview of this is that advertising done on search. So I'm referencing both Google and Bing is going to have higher intent usage, right? So what that means is the consumer who is being exposed to my ad 
is actually searching for what I am selling, right? So you're going to, at the end of the day, get fewer clicks, more expensive clicks, but more relevant clicks, more conducive to leads on search. So that's when, if I click the leads button, it's going to allocate more of my budget towards leads. If I click branding, it's going to do the inverse of that. And while I'm on social, the there is not the express intent of the users, right? They are scrolling through their social media right now. So I'm going to get more impressions, more clicks, less expensive clicks, but at the end of the day, less relevant clicks. So, and then if I want to just go custom and go, hey, you know what? I'm full in on this or full in on that. I can do so. Now, as we discussed earlier, um, the, the ad intelligence campaigns run for a fixed duration of 21 days, right? So I'm not, do not have the ability to add it here. Down, I can change my budget. I'm going to see previews of my ads here. Estimated performance, like I saw on the previous page. Um, the destination is something I want to call out here. So when somebody clicks on your ad, you see the learn more button in your ad, you're probably familiar with them in advertising and on Facebook in general. They're taken to a destination. And that destination is a custom created single property website under which you're prominently branded, right? Um, and then location. And I want to call out this one too, to pay particular attention to this, because this is something you are setting yourself, right? So if I click to edit here, this particular property, I'm zoomed in on this area. If I'm selling an equestrian property out in uh, outside of Denver, this is not who I want to market to. Who I want to market to, I probably want to shrink the radius. Maybe I'll even shrink it a little bit more. 15 miles radius is as small as you can make it under fair housing with Facebook. And then I want to pull that over to the people that have money for that second home. I want to click save and I'm done. Okay. And after this, I click approve, go through a familiar payment process that you've all experienced before. And then my ad is published. And within a couple hours, I'll start receiving impressions, clicks, and leads. Now, I want to take you through the ad target process really quickly. I can click on any of these, see a version of my ad. I'm going to run coming soon here. Next, same, same screen we saw previously. Now, here I have some more options, more customization involved with ad target. So here I go, okay, I want to dump all my budget into only three days. That's the minimum we allow on the platform. And you'll notice the difference that this is only spending on social. So to what I referred to earlier, if I was running a three-day campaign, it simply would not be effective on search. I click Confirm. I now have still the ability to edit the duration of the campaign. And I can also edit the copy on this. So for those of us who want to customize, you can do so on this. And I also have the ability to edit the banner. So this is going to really be a single purpose campaign with a single goal in mind. And then the next job out of that is I click approve and also go through that payment process. Okay, where I want to take you next is, okay, well, and you should be reasonably asking, well, these leads and reactions and they're generated, how am I going to know, right? So you have, we are connected directly to the social platforms and to the search platforms. And we return to you any engagement with your ads or any uh, 
any contact forms that are completed in real time. And as we all know, as real estate agents, uh, real estate leads expire very quickly. So um, the, the moment somebody completes contact form or reacts to your ad, you are going to be sent a notification to your email. When you click on that notification, you can actually respond directly into the email and contacting your client if you so choose, but there is also the opportunity to come back to your campaign management dashboard. And that's what I'm reflecting here. And I wanted to discuss some of the utility that you have within this. Um, so I'm right now, if I if I if you received a notification around a single campaign that you're running, you will be taken to this page. We split up the types of leads by contact forms. So this is somebody who left their email address, left their phone number. They can be contacted through the native apps directly through the platform. What we also surface, which you may or may not consider a lead, I consider it a light lead, is social interactions. So if somebody is to uh, like your ad, you're going to see the reaction here. If somebody is to comment on your ad, you'll also see that reaction. So you'll see three different emails from us. One relating to a contact form, something you probably want to jump on relatively quickly. You're going to see another email form for, for comments because those are probably the next highest in their urgency. Um, somebody may leave a message going, love the house. It's too big for me. Do you have anything else in the neighborhood? And that's something you're going to want to respond to. And somebody may just simply react and you go, okay, well, somebody liked the house, maybe they're in the market. Um, but if I go back here, I can view all of my campaigns that I've run. And this is a roll up of the analytics associated with them. I will go back into this existing campaign. Now, if you asked, well, what does my ad actually look like in the wild, right? That's what this view ad button is. So if I click this, what I'm gonna see is this is what it looks like out in the wild, right? So this is the actual ad that's running on Facebook. I'm actually viewing it on the Facebook platform. When I'm in here, I have the opportunity to see who liked, review comments. What I also have in here is the ad report. And this is what we talked about earlier in going, okay, I really want to demonstrate my marketing savvy and how hard I'm working on behalf of my, my, uh, my seller, I simply click on that. So what that's going to take me is the, the analytics on, on my ad. So, and we try to make this as simple to understand because it is going to go to sellers, right? So instead of really reflecting the number of impressions or the number of people, um, we refer to it as saw your ad. And then when we're talking about clicks, well, what's a click? Well, it's the number of people who really expressed interest on that. And this is, you can copy this URL here to be able to send it to your seller, or you can click share, which will open up your native app. And you can either, if you're on a phone, you can text it to them going, look at all the eyeballs we're getting on this property, or you can send it to them via email. And I want to show you one other thing that I think is kind of cool on here. So if I see Juan Pablo Camacho, and I'm sorry, like I pulled up a just a real campaign dashboard. Um, there are trolls on the internet if you're picking this one up. And I go, that's just a reality of that world. I wish it wasn't, but here we are. Um, so if I want to engage with this person, I'm able to go click engage. I will go, oh, who's liking this ad? And I, if I'm in my personal profile, I can go ahead and communicate with this individual directly or invite them or send out a connection request. And like I said, I didn't think that this was going to take the entire time. I'm happy to hey, take Eric. questions at this uh, point. Eric. Yes. Sorry to, sorry to bust in. I, we've got a couple questions, but before, and the questions are kind of about the ads and about the landing pages. I found a really nice ad 
that I'd like to show from one of the agents in North Star. You know, we've only been open a couple of days. Yeah. Um, but let me show this. 